My name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek TV at Gen Con 2014, and this is our first interview of the convention. Okay. I'm sitting down with Dirk Niemeyer of Conquistador Games, and welcome. Thanks. <laughs> I know, it's kind of always exciting to be the first one. Sure. <laughs> um, but you have brought us a Liberty, Ro oh, excuse me, War Stories, Liberty Road. Yeah. Um, which we were really excited to have you come over and get. So you were telling me just before we started that this was a limited release here. Yeah. Um, so people can get their hands on it now. Yeah. But you know, I would love for you to just kind of walk through a little five minute overview on what to expect when you open up the box. Sure. So War Stories is our tactical system. And we have here World War II. This is Liberty Road. We also have a set called Red Storm. And our focus with War Stories is getting it as easy and quick to play as possible while having as much realism in Chrome as possible. So putting those two things in the same package is, is kind of tough to do. And, and we're pretty excited with what we've done with it. So part of that is telling the story similar to how real soldiers encountered the war. So in typical tactical war games like this, you know what your opponent's units are, they know what your units are, you know what they're trying to do, they know what you're trying to do. So it, it's really phony. It might be fun, I love games like that, but it's really, really phony. And so what we did is we read a lot of accounts of what it was like to be in battle, of you know, if you're going through the woods, you know, you don't know what's out there. Every step is either scary or you forget about it and suddenly you're blown up because you're not paying attention. And we wanted to really capture that with war stories. So the first thing that we did is we put together two different scenario books so that each player gets their own secret book that for each scenario shows them where they deploy from, shows them what their units are, where their special goodies are, and then if you're the defender, what fog of war you can set up. So a lot of the fog of war is empty, so the attacker gets used to just moving and not having any trouble, but before they know it, they're gonna run into some mines, or they might run into an ambush, which I don't think I have the marker handy. Uh, so so it's, it's all based on having these units that are set up as blocks, so you, you don't know what I have and I don't know what you have, and going through this, this scenario in very uncertain terms. So that uncertainty is a big part of the War Story system. The other thing that we've done is a common trait of really all of the games that are tactical games like this are that they use a lot of charts that you always are having to reference and say, okay, now I'm moving, what effect are the woods going to have? Mm. Now I'm firing, what effect are the buildings going to have? And what we've done with War Stories, we've thrown out every single chart and everything that you need to play this game, soup to nuts, is communicated by the map pieces, the terrain overlays, the information on the unit blocks, the information on the combat ships, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, as well as the information on the cards. So first to talk about movement, Again, as I mentioned before, typically in a game, all the different terrain has different movement impacts. You'd have to look and see what's, what's the number. How much does it cost to move through this or move through that? In War Stories, we've set the map up into areas. So this is an area of open ground, and it costs one movement point to zoom all the way across it or zoom anywhere into it. However, as we come up to this hill, we'll see that the areas are much different shapes. So you can move laterally over the hill this way very quickly, but it's very slow to move up it this way. This piece is just generally see, there's slow. There's a boundary inside of this hill as That's well. That's right, there's all these sub areas inside. So there's not a single chart for figuring out movement. You, just like a real soldier, would look at the ground and say, boy, can I sprint across this? Can I get over those rocks? Little, yeah, a little straight plane there. You can estimate it the same way here. It's mm. not counting, it's not math, it's experience. And that's what we're really about at Conquistador, is thematic integration and experience. So the other thing that we've really simplified is the combat. So let's pretend that the Sherman Firefly is being fired on by this Panzer IV. We'll put the Sherman Firefly here, and the Panzer IV here. The blue number is their, their ability against vehicles. So this is saying it has a range of 11 and a penetration of 3. Well, it's 1, 2, 3 hexes away, so it's in range. Once you know it's in range, that's all you need. You reach into the combat bag of chips, and you take out a chip, and you look at the vehicle side with the tank. There's also an infantry side that has different math. So we're 3 away. We're looking for the 3. So the basic result is a reduction. However, there's different modifiers. And when it's a vehicle shooting on a vehicle, you have the penetration rating of the shooting vehicle. So the range is 11, the penetration is three against the armor of the target. Here, the Sherman Firefly has front armor of three, which is what we're shooting at, or rear armor of two. 
since the penetration is identical to the armor, there's no change in combat. If the penetration was higher, we would upshift and the reduction would turn to an elimination. If the penetration was lower, we would downshift and the reduction would turn into a suppression. So in, in a typical uh, tactical war game, with this level of detail, you'd be rolling dice, you'd be looking at charts and doing all this math to figure out what happens here. In war stories, you pick up the chip, check the range, compare the numbers, and you're done. And I'm guessing there's a, a variation between chips in the bag there, so there is a, a exactly. small element of luck in, as there would be in real life. You that's, know. that's correct. There's 18 different chips with a whole range and array of math. And we've worked with uh, World War II experts and historians and figuring out what the right balance is of results relative to, to what's being done. <laughs> so so that's uh, there's a lot of the realism there. And the other neat thing we've done are put a lot of things on cards. So in other World War II games, if you have an artillery strike, in the rule book, there's going to be a lot of rules that explain that. You've got to go to the rules, read about it. There's a special thing here, a special thing there. In war stories, every rule you need for the artillery strike is on the card. You don't need to look at the rules even once, not even the first time you play. It's all right here. And what that allows us to do is bring in dive bombers. It allows us to bring in the Rhino tank, which is uh, this obscure, geeky thing that was used by the Allies in the Battle of Normandy. Uh, virtually no tactical game ever made has this, but we've got the Rhino tank because all the rules can go on the card. So why not? It's just another card. Satchel charges, the Bangalore torpedo you're not going to see anywhere else, but ambushes, flamethrowers, intel, the whole nine yards. So we've been able to get all of this chrome and bring it into these components that are part of the out-of-the-box experience, that are part of the data right in front of you. And part of the history, too. And part of the history, too. So the game, because it has so many innovations, the first couple times you play, you have to wrap your head around it. It takes some time. Once you get it, you put the rule book away, there's not a single chart, you play what's in front of you, and you play a game in half an hour. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's usually one of my next questions is, well, how long does a typical thing, game take you? <laughs> it takes a couple games to, to get all of these new systems together. You won't have seen a lot of them before. Once you get them, it plays as fast as Memoir 44, but it has more realism than the middle or even upper tier games in the category. It's 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 pretty cool. For Yeah. And, and a very quick setup. Very quick setup. Yeah. For, Everything's... It was really about how can we make this as quick and simple as possible, and once we achieve that, how can we load on as much realism and chrome as possible, <laughs> but keeping it simple, keeping it quick, because that's what people want today. Yeah, they want oh, games yeah. that are fun and fast, move into one, move into the other. And what would, what would so your your book here that, um, would you mind just grabbing sure. it? I can't quite reach it. Um, would this give you your objectives that you're hoping to accomplish That's for your right. side of the game? That's I'm guessing exactly right. guess, looking at this also gives you different scenario setups yep. as well. So um, so we do, do you sort of have a matching counterpoint here in your book that we'd both be on That's right. so through we would, the choke point here? Yeah, we'd both be on through the choke point. Mm -hmm. Here it's written in German. You know, again, we're going for, for a lot of immersion. Uh, and yeah, you've got your objectives, only you know them. I've got my objectives, only you know your units. And in this scenario, you know, you've got the Bangalore torpedoes and the intel. I don't know you have those goodies. You're going to surprise me with those at some point. You've got all these reinforcements coming. You've got an artillery strike, an airstrike. Like in this one, you've got all kinds of goodies. Those are going to pound me over the course of the scenario again and again. <laughs> and I'm not going to see any of them coming. Um, but on my side, I've got a Tiger reinforcement. I've got a Tiger too. Those are going to pound you. Mm. It's going to come out of left field. So Now we just hope people forget that when they play this for the first game. <laughs> well, for the first game, it's all secret. But what we found is, you know, you play this game now. You kind of know what I have. I kind of know what you have. But then we play four, five, six. We go through all ten of them. That's true. You're going to forget. You forget. By the time you come back, you might remember a little bit, but there's always those things that just nail you. Oh, yeah. You. So, or, oh, 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 you should have remembered you yeah. had that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's fun, and it's people laugh. And you, this is a game where people are loud because there's all of these cinematic moments happening. It's, that's what we call it, war stories. Okay. Well, Dirk, I really appreciate you for, for coming by and showing us this. So this is uh, War Stories, Liberty Road. Now, you mentioned Red Storm yeah. as well. Is yeah. that uh, out already or forthcoming? So we have very limited quantities here at Gen Con. And then in a couple months, we'll have wide release of the game. All right. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Well, good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks. And uh, we appreciate you being the first guest of the convention. That's my, my honor. <laughs>